Hey, Aaron. Okay, here's that <clears throat> there's that G of X question that we got stuck on in lesson. I don't know why we got stuck. Um, it happens. Sometimes, you know, your brain just seizes up, even though you know, you know what to do. Okay, I got it straightened out now, and I can say it sensibly. Well, the claim is that I will say it sensibly to you, and here we go. So here was the G of X function that we were given. It is called a piecewise function or a piecewise defined function because it's defined in pieces. This particular uh, function, G of X, is defined in two distinct pieces. Here's the picture of it. And this tells you what values of X to use which rule for. So it says use this rule for for x's that are less than or equal to two, use this other rule for anybody bigger than two. And so that means, okay, if your x's are bigger than two, you draw that straight line. If your x's are less than two, you draw that bit of the quadratic. And because they put the quadratic bit into completed square form, I know that the vertex of the quadratic is at uh, 2 comma 1, because so I can read that off this format. And I also can see that for this line, when x, it's for x being strictly bigger than 2, but if x were 2, then the value of that would also be 1. So that's how I know that the line intersects the parabola. It, it meets up. They're not, you know, two unmatching pieces. They They do have continuity. Okay, I hope that's clear. So the question asked, tell me all the values of x where your function is greater than 28. So here's another picture of the function because I, I didn't, the y-intercept is um, up here at 5 because I can, if x is 0, then we're in the pink territory and that shakes out as 5. So I didn't draw my graph. <clears throat> well enough to show where 28 is. Okay, so if I want to know where this function exceeds 28, where all of the values of the function, the y values, exceed 28, here's my line, oh, not in green, we just use green, oh, I'll use blue. Here's the line y equals 28. You'll have to pretend that that's horizontal. Okay, so it's these bits of the graph where the y values are more than 28. And I want to know the x values that make that happen. So that's kind of like the, the boundary x's, right? At these x values is where g of x actually equals 28. Yeah, so it's a strict inequality. So I want to know all of those x's and I want to know all of those x's, and I will define that as saying like x greater than a, x less than b, but I have to work out what a and b are. I hope that strategy is clear. Okay, so because it's a piecewise function, I'm going to do it in two pieces. So I might focus first on the linear piece. I'll call that the right hand, right hand piece. Okay, and the rule for that is 4x minus 7, and I want to know where that is greater than 28. And that's a relatively friendly inequality, except for the fact that we don't get a number that's divisible by four. So who, who wrote this? I don't I don't know who, who, somebody got paid to write this question. Let's not think about that. Relatively swift result. So right here, this is 35 fourths. So any X that happens to be, be bigger than 35 fourths will cause g of x to use this rule and all the values will be bigger than 28. Yippee, hurrah, okay. The bog was this left-hand part. Okay, so our, I'll do it down here. Our left-hand part, okay, was x minus two quantity squared add one being bigger than 28. Now, quadratic inequalities are a complete pain in the ass. Pardon my French. So the, the sane way to deal with these things is graphically. And 
I'll show you a, another technique when I finish talking about this squat. Or not, sorry, excuse me, not another technique. I'll show you another example when we finish this question, um, just to make sure you feel okay on how to how to deal with these suckers. But the rule is always going to be use the graph, solve the equality, solve the equality, use the graph, and then you can figure out what x's you need. Okay, because trying to do square roots with inequalities, well, that, that's why we got bogged down because I didn't, my, my brain stopped and I forgot to, to do it this way. Okay, so this is what you do. So here's the equality where the quadratic equals 28, that's gonna be that boundary X value. And we're also gonna get one over on the other side because the math doesn't know that we only took half the quadratic, but I know that I want the negative value of X. Okay, if that strategy is not clear, please, please drop me a note. Okay, so if I set that quadratic equal to 28, I'm going to get that X right on the boundary. And then I know that I want all the X's smaller because I'm using the picture to figure out what portion of the graph I want. Okay, well solving that equality is a little bit nicer. I'm not going to multiply that out. Remember, did, did I was it you that I had the conversation with? You're already tucked up in completed square form that helps you solve the equation because x is only in one place and this sucker ain't gonna factorize because if it did, we would have a square number on the side and we don't, so we get the really ugly result take square roots, you have to throw in that plus or minus. Remember to do that. You square root both sides of an equation, slap in that plus or minus. So we get two choices for x, which I promised you because this equation doesn't know that we only are interested in half of the quadra quadratic. So we have an x equals two plus root 27 or x equals two minus root 27, but we, excuse me, just gone off camera again. We, we, we know the picture that we're playing with. We know we want a negative x value. That's a negative x value. It's, I tapped this out before in the calculator. It's about minus 3.2-ish. Off camera. It's about 3.2-ish, okay? Um, that's a, some positive number, 7.2-ish. Uh, okay, so this is the guy we're interested in. And I know from the picture that I want all the x's below, so I get the upper portion. So my grand overall result is g of x is greater than 28 when x is greater than 35. Why is that not a multiple of 4? Or when x is less than 2 minus root, what kind of a number is 2 minus root 27? Pete's sake. You have to say or because you can't be both things at the same time. And there's your solution. That was fun. <laughs> okay, I hope that helped. I, I really hope that was useful to you. Okay, here's a second example of how to how to deal with quadratic inequalities. Okay, and maybe you have something like this. Maybe you've got, um, I'll, I'll make, Maybe maybe you want to say something like um, x squared plus 7x plus 6 is less than 0. I don't know. Suppose you have this, OK? And you want to know all the x's that make this inequality true, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture. And actually, actually, before I draw the picture, I'm going to notice that I have a zero here. And I realize that that factorizes because I, I made it so. That's x plus 6, x plus 1. Okay, so first off, I notice I got a zero. That's easy to work with. And I've got factorization. So I'm going to grab this and think about the graph. Okay, and because it factorizes, it makes a really nice graph. I know that the x-intercepts are at minus six and minus one. 
and the x squared term was positive so he's an openy uppy kind of guy kind of a guy and he's like quadratic and not weird shaped well i guess i guess you might think quadratic is a weird shape okay so there's a happy happy dippy picture okay and if i want to know where this expression is less than zero these are the y values. I want to know where y is less than zero. And that happens down here. All these bits of the graph, that's where y is less than zero. And that happens for x living between minus six and minus one. And I can see that from the picture. And that is, this is a common way to meet quadratic inequalities is shove everything to one side, get a zero on the other. And oftentimes that sucker will factorize. So you can draw yourself a picture, you're comparing it against zero. So you either want the dippy bit below the graph or you want the arms sitting above the x axis, excuse me, x axis. So you either have x's in that middle range or you have x's out in the wings. And you do that based on the picture, not trying to struggle yourself through, sorry, I'm drinking tea and I'm really, really burpy, um, struggling through the algebra of quadratic inequalities. I can show you the algebraic analysis, but we'd both cry, draw the picture. Okay, I don't think they're going to give you cubic inequalities or anything god awful worse because it's just not worth wasting your time on the exam for it. And in the real world, you'd slap it in Desmos and use the damn picture anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's only important to be able to pick the algebra apart if you're deeply nerdy and desperately have to do a lot of pure math by hand. And that's neither of us right now.